Good day, fellow investors. Will the stock market bubble pop? Are we in a stock market bubble? That's what we are going to discuss today. And we are going to answer the question whether stocks will crash and give you some insights that will make it easier for you to make investment decisions. That's all we can do in this environment. We're going to look at the economy, define what the stock market bubble is, discuss an example from history, discuss the fundamentals, and then answer the question whether there will be a stock market crash or not, or what's the likelihood for that. Let's start with the stock market economy and the situation. Since the start of the year, stocks have been down just 3%. We had a bear market, a very fast bear market, then what we can call a crash. And since then, thanks to the Fed's intervention, printing of money, stocks have really, really rebounded. And when we look at the fundamentals, the economy, the situation is extremely bad. We have a decline in economic activity of 25, 30%, some countries even more. So we are seeing stocks going up and we are seeing an economic decline not seen since the Great Depression in the 1930s. Why are stocks going up? Well, the lender of last resort, the Fed, the Treasury, globally governments have stepped in, central banks have stepped in and started printing money. The Fed's balance sheet activity is double than what it was in 2008. Majority of balance sheet is in the system open market accounts, holdings, where they really pushed it. And then also treasury activity is much higher than in 2008. So both government and central banks globally have intervened to stabilize the situation. And the result is this, that the market didn't even make a move despite the terrible economic situation that we are all in. Also, if we look at the balance sheet, we see this is 2008, 2009, and this is what has already happened just in the last few months. And this is also the forecast, huge stimulus still coming in to the markets to save the economy and financial activities. And with so much money going in, what we can do as investors, what are investors thinking? Well, they are thinking the value of money will go down, interest rates are zero, so we better rush into real assets, stocks, real estate, whatever, commodities, gold. And that's why the prices of those assets go up and that's what we are seeing happening in the market and that's why stocks are up. Now we have to see whether this is a bubble or not, whether this is detached from fundamentals. A bubble is something that asset prices go up, but those are detached from fundamentals. Let's see whether that is the case. This is the situation. This is the predominant thought in the market. Money printing will create inflation and asset prices go up even more. So let's jump onto the train. Let's discuss what is a bubble. A bubble is a rapid escalation of asset prices followed by a contraction, often created by a surge in asset prices that is fundamentally unwarranted. Changes in investor behavior are the primary causes of bubbles that form in economies, securities, stock markets, and business sectors. So this de definition of a bubble comes from Investopedia. But we have stocks going up, okay, surge in asset prices, fundamentally unwarranted, we have terrible economic fundamentals. So that's one part of the definition that fits pretty well this environment. And then the changes in investor behavior are the primary causes of bubbles. Let's see about those changes. From the Minsky credit cycle model, bubble model, very interesting reads if you want to read Minsky. You have five stages, displacement, something new, boom, euphoria, profit taking, and then panic. Or when it comes to the economy, you have the start of the credit cycle, then you have a credit boom, peak Minsky moment when it's clear that the credit, the cash flows are not enough to finance the credit levels. And then it all, all of course comes to a bust and then we go to the next cycle. So this is what we can put in a stock market. This is, we can discuss economy situation and we'll put what's going on in the current environment into these two perspective. 
If you want to read more, the financial instability hypothesis by Minsky, and there are a few other articles and even a book that you can read about it. What's interesting is that the financial instability hypothesis suggests that over periods of prolonged prosperity, we have had 10 or even 40 years of prosperity, capitalist economies tend to move from a financial structure dominated by hedge finance, stable, safe, cash flow, 20%, 25% deposit for a loan or something, to a structure that increasingly emphasizes speculative and Ponzi finance. Unstable Ponzi finance is when you have to borrow just to pay interest. Let's say the US government has to do, has been doing that already for a few years. They borrow just to cover the interest, not even thinking about covering the debt. And this is the instability of the situation end of the long-term debt cycle, as Ray Dalio would say it. So, very interesting situation. We are now Ponzi Finance, and this is the question. Are we in a bubble with the economy, with the money printing, and will we see a Minsky mom moment? Or we have already seen it a month, two months, three months ago, when the Fed started intervening because the bust already happened in March, it was clear, okay, that will not be serviced, those went bust, and the Fed intervened to prevent something. So that's very interesting to analyze whether a stock market crash bubble already popped and we are now in a new cycle. If we look at the stock market, the stock market example from history, let's take the NASDAQ, dot com bubble. We have first 1990s displacement, something new came, that was the internet. The internet was going to change the world. It actually changed the world, but not as investors expected, not as fast. Next step, boom on cheap credit. In this case, with internet stocks, it was cheap equity or very expensive equity that was used as credit. Credit and equity, always money, something that's used to pump all the stocks up, mergers, acquisitions, IPOs, etc. Euphoria, that led to euphoria. Everybody invested in those stocks in the 1990s. A little bit of profit taking. Then it became clear that the equity wasn't valuable. The no money was being made above the cost of equity. Panic, bust, credit crunch. And we had a recession, 2002. So these are the typical steps of a stock market bubble and we have to see whether we are again in such a situation. If we look at fundamentals, we have to see whether stocks are correlated to fundamentals. The S&P 500 price earnings ratio is 22.39, which leads to a business return of 4.5%. This will be volatile, especially now with the crisis, but as the Fed intervened, if this virus situation gets passed in the next few months, uh, gets resolved, then this will again likely be the earnings in the next few years. So that's a 4.46% return. It's among the highest price earnings ratio in history, a little bit higher at the beginning of the century, 1929, the 1920s bubble, 1960s, beginning of the 60s, and then the dot-com bubble, and that's about it. In history, it usually was much, much lower. So, can we say that stocks are detached from fundamentals? Well, then if you look at the dot-com bubble, we are at price earnings. This is forward price earnings ratio, close to 50, real price earnings ratio, or even to 100. So, now we are at 20 compared to the 100. Yeah, we can say, yes, price earnings ratios are high from a historical perspective. But then, in a bubble perspective, not yet. And then there is something very important, perhaps the most important thing when it comes to investing in the current environment. The earnings yield of the S&P 500 is 4.5%. You own assets, you own businesses. The earnings yield of the alternative, let's say the 10-year treasury bond, the risk-free investment, investing in the US government with US dollars, which are the reserve currency of the world, is 0.68%. So if I look at investing and I see 0 0.68 or 0 0.5 or 0 or negative what you get now in European banks, and then I see the 4.5 earnings yield of the S&P 500, then this is 
extremely cheap. Then stocks are cheap, are not in the bubble, are excellently correlated to fundamentals. But depends on whether this will stay at these levels or will change. So the answer to the question is we have a lender of last resort. They are printing money at zero, zero interest rates. Maybe the crash has happened already. Intervention was faster than ever. It took four years for Roosevelt to launch the new deal. Now we have had immediate intervention. And then also deleveraging through in inflation. Everybody is thinking badly about the 70s, but the situation wasn't that bad after all. And then if we go to the bubble definition, a bubble is a rapid escalation of asset prices followed by a contraction. If the market doesn't contract, then we will not see a bubble and will not be called a bubble. So this is the question we have to answer. And let me show you this. This is a chart. Somebody would call it a bubble, right? So this is from 1980s till 1998. So it went from what? 270 to 90 to 80,000. So somebody would call this a bubble, but nobody never called it a bubble because if I go for till tonight, because if I go till today, since then it just kept on going, 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 going. Now it crashed a little bit. Of course, this is Berkshire's stock price. So why nobody never called Berkshire a bubble moment? Because the fundamentals weren't improving, interest rates went down as we have seen, and therefore this was not a bubble. If this happens also with the stock market, it will not be called a bubble situation. Also, if we look at how to solve the situation, if we look at inflation, inflation was pretty high in the 70s. We had rates of 5, 10%. But if we look at economic growth, okay, there has been some recessions, but 3%, 5, 5%, Watergate, recession ahead, 50%. Stock market crash, but then again, 5%, 4% growth, 5%, 3% growth, despite the huge levels of inflation and all the mumbo jumbo Watergate that, that was going on. So, inflation, 4 5% per year over the next decade, would ease all the debt concerns if real interest rates stay close to zero. Then again, stocks would be extremely cheap. And now when it comes to investing, investing is what you do now and how does what's going on in the market fit you personally. I'm personally extremely invested because what are my other options? I can sit in cash, but then I am running the risk to see it lose value due to inflation, due to money printing. And that's a trade-off you have to see how does that fit your life personally. We don't know whether there will be a next crash. Depends, what ha depends on what happens in the future and the reactions that we have now from central banks and governments that are pretty much immediate. In any case, I see money being printed, which means the value of money goes down, which incentivizes me to own real assets. And then if you behave as an owner, if you buy businesses that will do good no matter what, then you are set. You don't know what will your return be long term. It will be maybe 4%, maybe 10, 15. That's something that depends on the future. But there will be a return because you're buying businesses, you're buying good businesses, you're buying businesses that if we have inflation will do good, if we don't have inflation will also do good. And that's the message of this channel. Everything else is really just speculation. And then, of course, Bubbles, investing is not nice. There are crashes as we have seen two months ago, recessions as we are seeing now. There is inflation, deflation, economies, wars, riots, etc. And this is something we have to invest through. And the key is that you accumulate wealth through the cycles, through the bad and through the good. And over your life cycle, you end up well. That's the mindset. If you accumulate wealth, no matter what, then you're richer, richer and need richer. Why we can't predict what will happen? Well, nobody predicted this virus situation. 
perfectly, somebody said, but not predicted. And that is also the story of investing. Nobody can predict what will happen. But if you have something that will work forever, like accumulating assets, good assets, accumulating more when those are fairly priced, that's all you need to know about investing. And we will see whether we are in a bubble or not. If we are in a bubble, also adjust your investments accordingly so that whatever happens, you do well. And these are also the messages of this channel for investing videos for such analysis. Please subscribe. We do stock analysis, we do market commentary, and we do investing education, accounting, and mindset. For more structured learning where I try to write down these lessons, please check my free stock market investing course. And for my research reports, this is what I actually do in my life. I analyze businesses, I cover businesses, try to find great investments. Please check my stock market research platform. Also, check some other videos, please, here in the tags. Let me know in the comments what you think of this, what are your suggestions, and I'll see you in the next video.